Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Gold Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and guys, this is a big video. This is the beginning of our Puck 101 series here at Gold Line Hockey. And this is the first episode or the first edition of this playlist and we're going to be going over the different positions, the different... um. The lines on the ice, the rules, everything, salary cap, all of that stuff. We're going to be going over all of that throughout this series. But we're going to start off with the basic basics of hockey. This isn't even NHL. This is just hockey. Now, we're going to start off with the positions. And the first one we're going to start with today is what most would argue in terms of... um. I don't know how to say this because I don't know if it is the most important position. You could argue it's the most important position in hockey. And that is the center iceman or also known as the center. The center in hockey. Um, and actually, this is an interesting article from Hockey Monkey, how they put this. So what is a centerman is the question. A centerman in ice hockey is typically seen as the quarterback of the team. So if you put it in that sense, probably the most important player on the ice, especially while on offense. He will be the player tasked with winning the faceoff. So he's the guy that goes to the faceoff circle, keeping the flow of the play moving while in the offensive zone, and will oftentimes be the player leading breakouts from the defensive zone into the offensive zone. And these are the skills or the top skills for the center position. It requires a great hockey IQ, which is, you know, and vision, which is kind of the same thing, reading the play before it happens. So basically, let's say, um, hmm, let's say, let's say your winger is shooting, right? The winger is shooting, and you know where to go based off of where you think the puck's going to be next. That was something that Wayne Gretzky had always said. What made Wayne Gretzky so good was, yeah, he was good at you know the skill parts and and just the raw game. But he knew where the puck was going to be before his opponent knew or even anybody else on the ice knew where the puck was going to be next. And he was always able to get there first and he had that decided advantage. So that's the kind of stuff that requires uh, that part. Obviously a great passing ability, a strong skating ability, a strong stick, uh, stick play applies especially to faceoffs. So basically good hand-eye coordination, all that stuff, and creative playmaking abilities. Now, the part that they're leaving out here, and, and that's we'll get into that too, there are different types of, of center. So, you know, they're typically, you know, like this article is saying from Hockey Monkey, the quarterback of the team. So I think that's changed a little bit in today's league. We usually see when a team goes on the breakout, they start behind their own net. The defenseman has the puck, passes it up along the boards. You, typically, and this is how I played too, typically you will have the wingers kind of circling up the boards, trying to get open. They'll pass it along the boards, and that's the breakout. That's typically how it works, and that's not always how it works, um, but that is a pretty fundamental part of the game, and that doesn't involve the center necessarily. So obviously the offensive side, the, the center is very important. But there's also the other part of center that is incredibly important, and that is the two-way center. Now, that's the first one we're going to get to today. The two-way center, if you want to look at some, some examples of that, you look no further than a lot of the Selkie Trophy winners into the in the NHL, which are typically centers, right? Ryan O'Reilly, Patrice Bergeron, Andrzej Kopitar, back when he was in the NHL, Pavel Datsuk, that was their... Uh, protege that was their trophy that was when you think of the selkie trophy a guy that was a two-way center now you may be asking yourself what is what does that mean what's a two-way center in today's nhl it's more apparent than ever that you have to be a two-way center and if you're not you usually get critiqued for not being a two-way center per, like i said per example patrice bergeron and kopitar and those kinds of guys and even some of the younger guys that we're seeing come up into the league guys like uh, Nick Suzuki of the Montreal Canadiens, another perfect example of that. So a two-way center, basically, not only is he good at being offen you know, an offensive-minded player, his ability to bring the puck, or her, but I mean, we're, and we're talking NHL sense, um, the ability to bring the puck in 
and create offense. Usually the center is in front of the net. Not always. It depends on what the player is. If you know, Usually they'll put the bigger body in front of the net, and that's not always the center. Uh, but the center will, in most circumstances, be at the top of the box, creating screens, you know, blocking the vision, or he'll be on the wing, creating the offense from there. And and it again, it's it comes down to where he fits best. And sometimes even, you know, he'll be he'll be further up the crease in between the dots. That could also be a spot where you see the center. But the center as a two way center, so they're good on that side of the puck. But they're also good at back checking. Center is incredibly difficult because not only do you have to have those those five things that were mentioned, you also have to have the ability to be a good back checker. And and maybe we'll have a complete video on back checking at some point. But the ability to back check is it comes down to when the other team gets the puck. Let, let's say the two wingers pass to each other, right? They're passing back and forth and then the opposing team gets the puck in the opposing team's own end. They're breaking out into the other team's zone. Now, this is where the center becomes incredibly important because, again, it's it's not always, but you have the two defensemen. Hopefully, hopefully both defensemen didn't pinch unless you're playing peewee. That does happen. But you're talking about the two defensemen. Now, this is where we see odd man rushes sometimes, whether that defenseman has a breakdown in his play, he's further down pinching late in the game. That could create a two-on-one odd man rush for the team coming back out of their own zone. But you have the center. The center is typically, after the two defensemen, the center is more likely than not the third guy responsible. So let's say... The two wingers of the opposing team are coming out on a breakout, right? They're looking for the odd man rush. And let's say some third guy comes in. That third guy kind of stretching in, coming in late, that is the center's responsibility to either have his stick up lifted in the air or to be in his way where he can't get the puck. Because usually what happens is the two defensemen are creeping backwards. And I'll try and give you guys a visualization of this in the video. You're going to have the two defensemen coming back with the two other players. That third guy, if the defensemen are deep inside their own end, below the dots, that third guy coming in, not only is he going to be a free skater if the center's not there, but he's also going to be incredibly close to the net with no one in gap control where they could take the puck from him, whether that's a stick lift or just deflecting it out of, the, out of play with their stick, just interfering with it. That is the center's role. The center has to be that third guy back again, nine times out of 10. It's not every time, but that is the play. That is the two way center. The center that can not only create offense, but is extremely good at getting back as at least that second or third player back. And that is, that is difficult to do. And we see some lower level players do this. It's not just the prestigious Bergerons, O'Reilly's. It's not just those guys. It's also guys, again, this is my Islanders bias, a guy like Cases Ezekis, a very, I would say he is the best bottom six example of this player. Extremely good at back checking, but he's also, if not the first guy, the second guy for checking when they're trying to drive the play into their own into the opposing team's zone. So that is the two-way center. So they're good at back checking, stick lifting from behind, creating a disturbance as that th second or third uh, defender coming back into their own end. And then we also have the playmaking center. Now the playmaking center is, th that could be a winger, and we'll get to that in the winger video, but a playmaking center is basically what it is says he's the guy that passes the puck a lot. He's the center that doesn't necessarily have the greatest release. He's not necessarily the um, the sniper of the team scoring a ton of goals. He does need a guy that can score for him. The guy that finishes shots, he still needs that guy because he's the passer. Extremely good passer. Going to sauce it in between three or four defensemen. Okay, let's stick to maybe one, realistically, right? You're not going to, you know, the very good disher, he's the guy that's going to give you that setup right in between in between your feet, that great one-timer. Um, a couple of really good examples of the playmaking center. Perfect example, uh, you look down at Matt Barzell of the New York Islanders. Really, really good example of that. A very playmaking, a very playmaker mindset. Um, you know, it was... Again, he probably gets critiqued for not shooting enough, 
but that is the kind of um, the kind of guy you're looking at there, a play making center. Um, a couple other examples. I kind of look at a guy like Sam Reinhart, of who is currently now with the Florida Panthers. Another really good example of that as well. Um, not the guy that's going to shoot the puck all the time. He's going to pass the puck off to a winger who can finish finish that shot and hopefully not only put it in the net but you know through the net. So um, that's the playmaking center. Pretty self-explanatory there. He's at the end of the season probably going to have between you know, 30 or, you know, probably two to three times more assists than he does goals. Now we get to the sniper. Now the sniper, again, kind of like the playmaker, pretty self-explanatory. That's the, that's the goal scoring center. And there aren't a ton of these guys. Usually they're two way, two way centers or playmaking centers, but there are some sniper centers out there. Uh, uh, an extremely good example of that right now in Vegas or soon to be playing in his first game in Vegas is uh, Jack Eichel. And Jack Eichel is a perfect example of that. He he passes the puck time and again, but he has no problem bowling into the play, you know, getting to the top of the circle. He has a great release. He has a really good shot. Jack Eichel is a perfect example of a sniper center. He's not necessarily the best on, you know, defensively. He's not always going to He's worked on that a little bit, but his two-way game isn't the best. Hopefully under Pete DeBoer, he can fix some of those things. Um but the sniper center, again, he's the guy that can score goals. He's going to get the puck on a one-timer on the power play, probably, you know, along the wing. Um, but that's typically, again, the playmaking and sniper center, they could both be wingers too. And that is when we get to the winger video, uh, we will go over that. But typically, you have to have a little bit of all of that, especially if you want to play at the higher levels, college, NHL, Um and they typically say you have to be a pretty good skater to play center because, again, when when you're one of those better centers, you have to be able to really skate efficiently and proficiently because at the end of the day, you know, chances are if, if there's an important situation in a game, if you're you know, a penalty-killing center, that's difficult to do because you're going to be in your own zone a lot. You have to be able to win face-offs. You have to be able to win board battles. You know, but more likely than not, they are going to be in front of the net as well. So you usually have to be a little bit bigger. Again, that's not always the case, uh, but there are a lot of bigger centermen out there because, again, when you're dealing with the front of the net and dealing with a defenseman for the other team, especially if it's a guy like Zdeno Chara or one of those bigger guys out there, uh, Jamie Alexiak in Seattle, like you're dealing with guys where you're you have to be able to to hold your own in front of the net. Um, so just to recap real quick, center, there's the five key things to being a center, uh, you know, able to create playmaking abilities, strong uh, stick skills, just passing the puck, um, skating ability, uh, great hockey IQ and vision. Again, we went over all of that. And then the three really definitive centers we see in the NHL are the sniper center, which reminds me a lot of a guy like Jack Eichel right now in Vegas. Um the playmaking center, a lot like Matt Barzell of the New York Islanders, just very much more pass heavy. Uh, so when defenses read that, when they see Matt Barzell come into the zone, they're, I hate to say it, immediately checking to see who's on the wing. Because chances are, more likely than not, if you watch his, his footage, you're going to see guys like Matt Barzell have the tendency to pass the puck on a cross crease or behind them instead of taking the shot. So that's the playmaker. And then the two-way center is the centers like Patrice Bergeron. I'll give you a different name here. Alexander Barkov of the Florida Panthers. Th extremely talented. They could put up points and stuff. But they are also extremely good at getting back, checking, getting back defensively as a two-way center. Able to play on both sides of the rink. And that's something that NHL teams expect from all of their players. But when you have a two-way center, that is usually a very... High regard. Again, I could go across the league. Uh, Andre Kopitar, Alexander Barkov, Jonathan Taze of the Blackhawks, uh, Patrice Bergeron. You could go across and just name off different guys that are like that. Um, and like this says, you know, I couldn't put it any better. They're the quarterback on the ice. They, you know, a, a lot of times when you look at TV timeouts, when you look at, I mean, quite fittingly, I mean, a lot of captains are centers. 
Uh, that's not always the case, but they have such a huge responsibility for the team. Where's he going to win the puck back? You see before the faceoff, he'll go up to you know, the defenseman and say, I'm, I'm passing it back to him. I'm passing it back to you. That is all under the control of the center. The center has a huge responsibility. And um, and that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you like this. Uh, we're just trying this out. I'm really excited for this, so I'm hoping that this goes well. Just let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Did this help you out if you didn't know the center position? Um, and let me know what you guys think, because I think this is something that I could build off of. And uh, hopefully you guys watch the rest of this series, because I'm very excited to do this for you guys. So, as always... Thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys like what we're doing here at Goal Line Hockey and want to see the latest news around the NHL and more videos just like this one, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and an even bigger subscribe down below. Guys, make sure to check out the rest of this series as these videos come out if they haven't already. Thank you so much, and I will see you again next time.